Hi, I'm Steve Albini, and I'm in Studio A of Electrical Audio, and today I'm going to show you how to take the dents and dimples out of a used drum head. This is a technique that you can use to get a little bit of extra life out of the drum head. You can shrink out the dimples and uh, it doesn't make the drum head like new, but it gets rid of the dimples, which um, adds considerable life to the drum head. The dimples, the biggest problem with the dimples is that they, they act like corrugations and they stiffen the drum head. So the drum head doesn't respond properly, it doesn't resonate properly. They can also, in extreme cases, like especially in uh, floor toms, for example, where there's a lot of low frequency resonance, the dimples can actually sort of pop up and down and make a buzzing sound. Um, and that's a, that, this technique will solve all of those problems. Um, like I said, it doesn't completely rejuvenate the head, but it makes it usable again. Um, so the technique is you use a heat gun um, and these are sold in electronic supply shops and uh, plumbing supply shops, hardware stores, things like that. It's like a hair dryer, but it operates at much higher temperatures. Um, so the, the idea is you want to heat the head uh, somewhat evenly and then concentrate the heat on the individual dimples. You can, in a pinch, use a, a hair dryer, uh, but most of the time you're concentrating the heat so much on the hair dryer that the internal thermocouple inside the hair dryer has a tendency to pop and fail. So if you're going to, to use a hair dryer rather than a, a heat gun, I would suggest using one in a hotel room where you don't care if you've broken it. Don't use your own hair dryer. So all of the individual dimples have been shrunk out of the head now. Um, I like to let it cool for a minute and then run my hand over the surface to make sure that I haven't missed anything. And if I've missed a dimple, then I can go back and hit that dimple like I missed one right there, for example. A couple of other subtleties about this technique. Um, after you've heated the head up, the whole of the drum head is going to uh, um, sort of remember its manufactured shape, which may be different from uh, the tension that it was under when it was tuned, so you're going to have to, you're definitely going to have to retune the drum. You will have changed the tension over the whole surface of the head. Um, if the drum head has a reinforcement pad, like for example, um, this Evans head has an internal reinforcement pad underneath the center of the drum head, and the um, the Remo controlled sound, for example, those have an, um, a reinforcement applique on the underside of the head as well. You want to wait until the drum head is thoroughly cool before you hit it. Otherwise, the adhesive on that uh, reinforcement pad can soften from the heat and then it can delaminate when you hit it. So you want to make sure that everything is cooled back to normal room temperature before you actually hit the drum. Um, and one other thing that you can do, after you've shrunk the, head, the dimples out of the head and you're satisfied that the head is flat all the way around, you can even out the stresses in the head by slowly playing the heat gun over the whole surface of the head and that will um, take, out, take away any like sort of localized stresses that you've created by, by concentrating on the little spots of where the dimples are. So I'm going to do that now, I'll show you. Um, it still has the wear and the abrasion and, the, and any scratches that uh, it had from the original, uh, from its used incarnation, but the, the physical dents and dimples in the drum head are, are shrunk out of it, and so now it's got a flat playing surface and it's a little bit more even in tension. A couple of other things to be aware of. If you concentrate the heat on one area of the head for too long, that is if there's a dimple that's because of its shape, the heat isn't hitting it evenly, and you concentrate the, head, the heat there too long, the, the plastic can craze, that is, it becomes opaque and white. Um, and in a, extreme cases, it can actually sort of darken and blister. Um, if, you, if you do that, the head is shot, because that part of the head where it's been crazed or blistered um, is going to be much more brittle than the rest of the head. And as soon as a drumstick hits that spot or anywhere near that spot, the head's going to split. So you have to be careful to keep the, the heat source moving over the surface of the head so that it's not concentrated in one spot for too long. 
Um, if you don't have a heat gun, you don't have a hair dryer, you can invert the drum and use a, a, a butane cigarette lighter and very carefully shrink out the individual dimples. Much more prone to error uh, doing it that way. You're much more likely to burn the head and create one of those weak spots. But in a pinch, you can do it. Um, the sort of flamboyant roady way of doing this is to pour a shot of vodka on the head and set it on fire. Um, it has the same effect, a lot more dramatic and, you know, makes you the king of the road crew, I guess. So that technique works for any single ply mylar drum head. There are some special drum heads that are made out of uh, Kevlar cloth, for example, but this technique won't work on any of those laminated heads or any of those fabric heads. It only works um, on single ply mylar heads, but it works a treat on any of those.